Welcome to this tutorial on Nullspace EM, a fast, direct, and highly accurate solver ideal for large-scale electromagnetic analysis and design. This video is designed to enhance the onboarding of new Nullspace EM users by walking through the materials, CAD model and meshing, simulation configuration, and post-processing of a circularly polarized dual-feed patch antenna. This example is also included in the Nullspace EM user guide. For our example, we will be demonstrating how to model a circularly polarized patch antenna that uses two feeds to achieve the desired polarization. The antenna targets the commercial KA band high density fixed satellite service band operating from 19.7 to 20.2 GHz. To assess the operational performance of the antenna, this example requires port combining to calculate the desired output data. Engineering data of interest includes active S parameters, combined port bore site directivity and gain in the right hand and left hand circular polarization, and theta and phi pattern cuts of the combined port directivity. All of our resources to execute this example will be created and stored in a designated working directory, which we will name CP Patch Antenna. We'll begin by creating a local material library. The material library will contain the electromagnetic properties for the coding material. This is easily achieved with the Nullspace EM Python API script as shown. This model requires only a single material, Rogers RT Deroid 5880. The material can be considered essentially non-dispersive, so a constant material property specification can be used. To create the material library, execute the following command. After creating the material library, we can launch Nullspace Prep, a comprehensive CAD and high-order meshing preprocessor, part of the suite of Nullspace software products. Once it opens, we can set our working directory within Nullspace Prep for ease of use. To begin with the geometry setup, an initial set of parameters are established as shown. The geometry is in units of millimeters. The substrate will be Rogers RT Deroid 5880 with a thickness of 31 thousandths of an inch. With two symmetric feeds, the patch can be a simple square geometry defined by a width patch W. The feeds are modeled as rectangular strips, and each represents a diameter of 15 thousandths of an inch through the substrate. The equivalent strip width is based on the rule of thumb for electrically small wire to strip conversions. Each feed is offset from the center of the patch and set by the variable feed offset. The patch may be installed on a larger ground plane or integrated into a phased array. Thus, edge effects due to a finite ground plane size should be minimized. For this example, the ground plane will be a square and set to a width of 20 millimeters. Next, we will draw the substrate and move it such that the top surface is aligned with the Z equals zero plane. Note that the bore site of the antenna in this model will be along the x-axis. Then we'll draw the patch element, capturing the volume and surface IDs for convenience in later operations. The patch has two feeds that will be created using the split strip method. Since the two feeds are identical, it is easiest to first completely draw the first feed and then copy it for the second feed. To build the first voltage source, first create the strip capture the volume and the surface IDs, and move it to the proper position. Then use the split surface command to split the strip into two equal sized surfaces. Once the splitting operation occurs, the volume ID remains the same, but two new surfaces have been created. Create the second feed by copying and rotating the first feed. Since the feed strips are volumes embedded within the substrate, the proper topology should be preserved by subtracting the feed strip volumes from the substrate. For thin geometries like patch antennas, it is helpful to guide the mesh to place more elements on the ground plane in the vicinity of the patch, particularly along the patch edges where fringing fields exist. A simple method to accomplish this is to project the patch geometry onto the ground plane and imprint the shape. When the mesh generation occurs, the mesh will respect the curves corresponding to the imprinted shape. As the final step of CAD creation and prep, the geometry is imprinted and merged. 
This step ensures that any overlapping surfaces are properly accounted for and that the meshing will be performed yielding a watertight mesh. Next, we will assign material properties and create the voltage sources. Load the material library and create two voltage sources by referencing the stored IDs for the surfaces of each feed. Both sources will have a 50 ohm impedance. Assign the patch to be a PEC material and use Null Space Prep's extended entity referencing syntax to capture all surfaces in the substrate volume that correspond to the ground plane. Assign these surfaces to PEC. Finally, assign the substrate to Deroid 5880. To aid in referencing surfaces related to the voltage sources, we can create three groups of surfaces as follows. A patch antenna has two aspects that influence how a quality mesh should be created. First, the voltage sources must be properly meshed. The curve common to the voltage source surfaces for each feed should have a single mesh edge. Similarly, the curve common to the bottom of a voltage source and ground plane should have at least two mesh edges. The curve at the intersection of the voltage source and patch should also have two mesh edges. The second aspect of a patch influencing meshing is the well-known fringing field along the patch edge. Rather than uniformly refining the mesh, these physics can be more accurately captured by controlling the mesh size at the patch outer edge. The mesh on the ground plane should be refined in the same vicinity, however the fields at the ground plane will have less sharp variation and do not need to be refined as much. One way to accomplish this is by explicitly setting the mesh interval on each of the curves. The patch is slightly less than lambda over 3 in size. For first order basis functions, which is the default of null space EM, a mesh interval corresponding to lambda over 30 will yield very accurate results. The rest of the mesh is generated using a uniform rule of lambda over 10. The resulting mesh is shown. Save the resulting meshed model to a CUB5 file. Once the object has been created, we can generate the Python script that creates the null space EM simulation model and produces the report. We'll begin by importing NumPy and null space EM. Then, we will load the material library for association with the simulation configuration and initialize with the CUB5 file, model scaling, and a frequency suite. To finalize the model configuration, we will save and pass in the material library. Since this model does not take long to run, the report can be conveniently configured in the same Python script. First, a report object is created and associated with the model configuration object. Since the desired engineering data can be derived from Y parameters and FAR fields, these are requested. Later, in the post-processing state, we will plot the 3D gain pattern in Paraview, so we will request Paraview output which will provide one XMF file per mesh block for easily isolating only the desired parts of the geometry. To run the simulation and report, execute the following command. The primary quantities of interest for this example are the active S parameters and the combined port directivity and gain for circular polarization. The post-processing is initialized as follows. To evaluate the match of the feed before combining and the level of feed-to-feed -feed coupling, S11 and S21 are initially plotted. Then, the ports are combined for right-hand circular polarization by calculating the active return loss. This value is then plotted and compared to the single port return loss. As expected, there is a slight shift, but the result well encompasses the desired operating band. To compute the boresight directivity and gain in circular polarization, the get directivity and get gain functions are used with a request for circular polarization. The weights used for right-hand circular polarization port combining are provided to these functions. 
For the gain, the weights are normalized to ensure the same power is applied to the combined port case as would be applied to the single port case. Since boresight in this example is theta at 90 degrees, the get nearest function is employed to extract the proper theta angle index into the directivity and gain datasets. For each dataset, the array indexing corresponds to phi at 0 degrees, theta at 90 degrees, the combined port 1, all frequencies, and the right-hand polarization, respectively. Similarly, the other indexing yields the boresight value for left-hand polarization. Pattern cuts for the directivity at the center frequency of 20 GHz are produced as follows. Null Space EM also provides the ability to visualize the full 3D pattern directly from a post-processing script using the polar plot 3D function. To visualize the gain pattern in Paraview, invoke the Generate 3D Fields Paraview function. To run the post-processing script, execute the following command. To visualize the three-dimensional right-hand circular polarization gain at the center frequency of 20 GHz in Paraview, load the geometry XML files and apply custom coloring to parts 5 through 7. Then load the RHCP VTK file. As an option, we can set the color scheme to turbo and apply a scaling factor to all dimensions. As another option, we can set the transparency to 50%. For further reference, visit the user guide of your Nullspace EM installation to follow along with more examples. Nullspace, built for engineers by engineers. Thank you for watching this video and check out our YouTube channel for more helpful tutorials, webinars, and demonstrations.